Hi everyone, it's Juan here uh, from Open Design Team here in Berlin. Uh, I am with Eric, he's a systems engineer with a master's in computer science and now he's a candidate in the Singapore University of Technology and Design, currently working in a model on model checking for system security. Yep. Now he's visiting Berlin and he will talk about talk with us about uh, a subject that is really important for us and could be interesting for, for you also. Hey, thank you, Juan. Welcome. Yeah, um, so I wanted to talk about this a bit because we've been discussing with Han a couple of, of things mostly related to uh, interdisciplinary uh, work mm -hmm. and how these dynamics of, of these interdisciplinary projects occur. And there seems to always be this uh, sort of problem, and it's how do people sort of communicate or find this common ground. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember reading, uh, actually quite recently, about this branch of mathematics that is called category theory. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the idea of category theory is that unlike all the branches of mathematics, are specialized, they study very concrete things. Mm -hmm. This category theory studies how these mathematics or these branches actually relate to each other. So it's like the mathematics of mathematics. Mm -hmm. um, and why, why, why would it be interesting in, the, in this case of uh, interdisciplinary projects? And we believe that uh, things that are common for different disciplines sometimes can be communicated, even though uh, they, there is the same object and you have different views from the two different disciplines. This, this disparity of views prevents effective communication. And, and this also happens sometimes in the branches of mathematics. You have some central concept that is very important. Uh, and you see it from the perspective of geometry, and you see one thing, and if you look at it from the perspective of topology, you see another thing. And sometimes these two things seem very different, but it's not, they refer to the same concept. So, creating these bridges, which is what category theory does in, in terms of, these are a bit of like, concrete uh, words, but don't worry, it's not advanced concepts. Think of them as, as bridges. We have a bridge that connects topology and a bridge that connects geometry. And if you can think uh, mm -hmm. through this concept, you can think of a bridge that could connect someone who's working in product development and someone who is working in programming languages to, to talk through a central concept. So it's, it's a concept that has to be used, but you're able to somehow created this bridge, this two this bit bi-directional bridge that allows you to talk to me and I can talk to you in such a way that we sort of refer to the same object and we understand each other. And yeah, because it sounds like it's really difficult to actually uh, create interdisciplinary. It's like like really interesting, but it's like uh, uh, to do that correctly, it, it's actually painful because you don't share the same code, the same language. The same ways to see the world because I mean, it's not about the language speaking, mm -hmm. it's more about the, 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 the barriers of like your own discipline. So how, how can you, for example, someone who is for example, from the field of, of, of design could you understand this, 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 this uh, category theory in a way that could be useful for, for them to approach their own projects and um, because maybe they are not mathematicians mm -hmm. but they maybe without something, you know, something inside you. So there is a central concept in category theory, which is the notion of abstraction. Mm -hmm. So you want you want to remove all the unnecessary details to have like a clear picture of, of, of what you want to, to express. And the details you can add them later. For a person that is working, say, on design, this also has to do with the, with I would, I think it's sort of called like this, this top-down development where you start with something that is very general and then you concretize it a bit every step of the process. Mm -hmm. And it 
in the end, you focus on the details, but at the beginning, you focus back on the general okay. idea. And this is very related to this category theory way of thinking, which is unfortunately not what the, the, not the mathematics that teach you at school, but it, it's not something you cannot really learn. It's actually a very simple. So how how do I how do I explain it like this? From very basic concepts, you can construct more complicated things. Why do I mean that? You have to mind. Yeah. So um, in category theory, you have mostly two things to represent. It. You have points uh, we will refer to as objects. And relations in this object. So you will not be seeing things in isolation. You will be seeing them relate to each other. So what does what does this mean? So um, there is some sort of connection from here to here. It's a, it's a direct connection. Let's say like this. And to be a category, it has to satisfy some rules. So basic rules. These, all the objects have like a narrow to themselves, so they are sort of related to each other. And there is a composition of relations, so it's like if you have this arrow here and this arrow here, there is a composite arrow that goes like this. Yeah. And to make things more interesting and more complete, if you have another object here, you remember you need arrow that goes back to here. Mm -hmm. If you have an arrow here, not only you need an arrow here, but you also need an arrow here. Mm -hmm. And what it means is that if you take this path, it is the same as if you want to do this path or you do this direct path. Mm -hmm. um, it, is, it is sort of uh, abstracting a bit from the order of where you, of you travel. And it's, and it's sort of very important because when you're able to interchange let's say, some operation, it simplifies things, right? If you don't have to think about the order of things, it really simplifies things. Imagine if you're developing a project that some person has to talk first and then the other person has to talk second because okay. it makes a difference. That doesn't really make sense. Yeah. It would make sense that it doesn't matter which order they talk, you would just sort of communicate the same idea. Okay. So these are the two basic rules of, of capital. That so the, the way you, you you travel these arrows, creating this composition doesn't really matter, and that everybody is like related to themselves. And, and you say, okay, but this is a bunch of, of arrows and, and, and points. It doesn't really say anything. Yeah, it looks a little abstract. Yeah, yes. yeah, it is too abstract. <laughs> it's not exactly what you what you're going to say. But you can start to have interesting things. So imagine imagine that I'm going to draw. Here in this square, something very small. Imagine that we have this thing, just one out. So, what is the rule of the cat? Yeah. The rule of the cat is that you need, need, you need okay. Yeah. But what if we add another one? Yep. Yeah. So, let's, I'm going to call this arrow zero. Yes. Um, you can compose this thing. Let's compose this thing. So you can compose zero to one. That has to be equal to something. This is the identity. So let's say it's one. But when you compose one to one, you have to add it. Well, it's like a loop. Like this. This one composed with one. And then you can keep doing this. So one composed with one composed with one, and then you can keep on having loops like this. Like this. Mm -hmm. like this. And you have to do this infinitely amount of time because you will always be able to compose this one with the last one that you added. But the funny thing is that uh, you start to think, okay, this this one. Composed with one looks like a two, 
and this, for example, looks like a three. Yeah. So you're able to represent this concept of the natural numbers as as this uh, okay. category okay. of arrows that grow and grow. And it, it sort of makes sense. If you think about this as a plus sign, yes. if you add ones, one plus one plus one, and, and you were to rename this, let's say, as a two here, yeah. then you can say two plus one is equal to three, which is equal to one plus two. Yeah. So this, this is sort of the flexibility that you get when you respect the rules. And, and you, can, you can see that this uh, construction appeared out of just this very simple rules of having a dot and having these arrows to themselves. And, and the idea is that, okay, this talks about natural numbers, but it also corresponds to a more interesting and important construction, which is called uh, a monoid. Yes. I will, I will not go into Canyon. <laughs> I will not go into detail what monoids are, but monoids are very important. You can you can see monoids can you, everywhere. Can you it? Yes. Maybe it's where the one yeah. who wants the monoids. Monoids. Oh, yes. Okay. So monoids in, in, in reality are just a set of elements with a particular element and an operation. So an example of monoids are the a list of, of words, for example. Okay. So if you have one word here, and you have another word here, you can glue them together to form uh, a longer word. Here. Okay. With this word, this is one here, and this word here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this, this, this mathematical construction is actually the same as this, where uh, Zero, this arrow here would correspond to uh, this empty, empty list that you can put here and nothing changes. So you have like the one here and the zero here, and this is always equal to one. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. equal to one. And it's also the same as if you were in the opposite of the zero and the one. <laughs> and these mathematical constructions are, are very important in mathematics. Well, because if you were to add more things to this, then you have uh, groups, and then you have uh, fields, and it's 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 a little bit like a building block. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, it is building block. So the nice thing about this is that it comes from very simple rules, mm -hmm. but you're able to describe very powerful concepts. Okay, and that's important. And and the idea. Okay, this is a bit. <laughs> I mean, it's, very, it's very fine, it's very abstract, but <laughs> imagine that you have your knowledge represented sort of like in a category. So I work in computer science, yeah. and you work in design, and I tell you, okay, my concepts are related in this way, like this. And then you say, oh, okay, I have something similar, right? I have another category. Here, that maybe has less objects or more, doesn't, doesn't um, be like this or something like that. They are related, they are all connected to each other or whatever. Yes. And, and, and we want to find some sort of connections or a way to transport this knowledge that I have here into you and maybe the knowledge that you have onto me. And in category theory, there are very uh, special constructions for that that are called parameters. So more or less, they describe a set of rules that you have to satisfy to enable this transfer of knowledge. Okay. Okay. I will not go much into detail, but parameters preserve the structure. Of okay. Things. Yes. So maybe maybe it turns out that. Uh, a mapping of all this knowledge just goes to this element yes. um, because it doesn't fit anywhere. It, it cannot fit anywhere. Yes. But that is also good because it means that we can focus on, on maybe this part and, and, and from here I can, I can sort of go here or go here or go here by reversing this, this translation. 
Um, it could also happen that I can, I can compress this knowledge and map it there. And, and you can sort of, given that you're, you're familiar with this, you can sort of see how I mapped my knowledge onto your knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you can start to understand better sort of what I mean. You see like these maps to this, and you can sort of follow my ideas when I try to explain them here. Yes. Because you're following them here. So by preserving structure, for example, I mean that if, if I do this movement here, you can follow that movement. In here. your own structure. Any exactly. time. Yeah, that's good. Yes. And it's and it's very convenient because it allows you to not only preserve your knowledge, mm -hmm. but uh, build the bridges between the different uh, disciplines. And the nice thing about these bridges is that where they are built, they are correct. Okay. You can also use them to bridge to other disciplines, so if there is a third person, right, that you more or less have talked to them. Uh, you can also extend the bridge that I created through your knowledge to oh, other ones. Oh, that's incredible. So you, you have also this composition of arts and, and, and of mappings of knowledge that can facilitate this uh, idea of uh, knowledge communication between the different disciplines. If, okay, there is a, there is a caveat to this, and it's that you really need to sit down and formalize like this knowledge. Yeah. So you really have to sit down and talk. And like it's called an example. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have something that is central, let's say your project, the idea of your project. And I sit here, you sit there, and the other person sits there, and we all draw something. Okay. Yes, we draw our architecture. Mm -hmm. And then we try to find a way to map it to each other. Okay. Okay. So even though we are describing the same object on three disciplines, there has to be some sort of similarity. There has to be it's the same yeah, object. It's same object. Yes. And, and by having this mapping, you sort of start to understand what does something mean to that person, and how does it map into your <laughs> So it, it, it starts to make communication easier, I believe. Okay. That's incredible. Uh, it's still confusing in the sense of like, it's uh, it's difficult to, to condense in a small capsule of time like this one. But I think it's a, it's a great uh, inspiration for us to, to, to go deeper in this, 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 um, yeah, yeah, this knowledge. But uh, I have maybe a question about like now, who is using this kind of like technology, sorry, this, this theory, like, uh, uh, yeah, now, and maybe in the future you see other disciplines beyond who is using it now, mm -hmm. like in the future, to, they will use it, or for what, maybe, also? Yeah. Okay, so, I have to provide a disclaimer now. Uh, category theory is about 17 years old, it's not that old of a branch of mathematics. Algebra or calculus is more recent, but uh, it takes time for mathematical theories to sort of gain strength and be widely used. I work in computer science where we sort of uh, rub shoulders with mathematicians, and only until recently it started to like, provide new insights into, into what I work. Um, which is, let's say, how to model check systems that have properties like non-determinism or a, a probabilistic stochastic nature or so. So uh, only until now you start to see sort of like the influence of the category here. But it's happening. Uh, modern programming languages, now that everybody is supposed to learn how to program, these new programming languages will borrow a lot from the okay. category theory, even if you don't know it. Functional languages, in which I believe are, are the future, will borrow from category theory. And, and the idea is that you should not think of this as, oh, the, the another mathematics that I will never going to use. No, it is sort of a, a paradigm, a way of thinking. Okay. And it's, uh, it gives you sort of an intuition of how things have the right structure and when they do not. 
when you have these nice things that it doesn't matter which way you go or that you know that the rules are clear you know what to do next to sort of make the system satisfied that helps you because it simplifies things for you the problem is clear you can focus on only implementation right? mm -hmm. but when you have artificial descriptions of things of programming language mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that if, if if you do not define every particular case and everything in terms of you don't know what's going to happen. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's not nice. It's, yeah. You you end up having this weird side effect. Uh, the program was supposed to crash, but it didn't. And now an attacker is able to take control of your yeah. computer. So that's maybe a question I want to ask you. Now, but I think that's a few. Where like how did you do you, you, you fall in? These uh, category theory also by studying and security. Yeah. Yes. So it could be interesting to know, just because I want to know about a little bit like that. That's another issue, but how you, you got to, to, to that. Okay. So um, in security, there is something that is central to to any security problem, and it's what's your attacker model. What is your attacker able to do? How is he, is he or she able to interact with your system? And sometimes it is not very clear. And it's not very clear because it's artificially made, it is very restricted, it tries to match reality. So these, these uh, attacker models can be too specific. And when you try to compare them with other attacker models, there's no way. There is no way. So you're thinking about like intuition in sense, yeah? Yeah, which is okay. I mean, for a particular problem, it's okay. But then when you want to say, okay, what does this solution and this solution have in common, you have no way to start because they are incomparable. Mm -hmm. What I am trying to do using category theory is to start with a framework that is so general that it allows everything. And if you want to focus on this particular attacker, you can start to say, okay, I know that this allows everything, but I'm going to focus here, focus there, focus and once you're done, you can go back and say, okay, what were my assumptions? Did I uh, make any critical assumptions that would really take out all these other attackers in the category? And if the answer is no, then your solution is more general than you originally thought. Yeah. Okay, if you made these assumptions and you restricted this, okay, it's fine, it's not so general, but you have this formal framework where you can prove, okay, I started general, I like to uh, a magnifying glass or, or I don't know, I just went focused on this area. But the way I did it was uh, maybe a bit artificial and I didn't really need to do that. All right. So I can, I can generalize my solution. And this has been happening really recently on algorithms. Mm -hmm. Very important algorithms have been shown to be more general than their original uh, intention. intention. Right. You can use them for yeah. many, many things. Yeah. And you could only discover those things by showing, okay, you the assumptions you make, did you feel really need to make them if you were in this general concept? Yeah, for me it's something like that. It's going like this all over like complexity of, 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 of um, uh, the growing amount of people interacting is making more um, more complex, and now it's uh, maybe that's why you are using this this um, this approach to address uh, that uh, that change maybe in the, the, the dependency. Yeah, I personally just like order more. So I, if my ideas are in this array, I cannot really move forward. This this theory allows me to focus on the important parts okay. because the the details are sort of covered by this. I mean, you can you can do courses in for for many different audiences on, on category <laughs> for mathematicians, for engineers, for that, uh, that could be interesting just to maybe to know it's about uh, what uh, we can look uh, to, to know more about this. You know, if you are like uh, in the, uh, you are looking this video or something, uh, maybe uh, give us some insights or some questions, questions, questions or something we can. Look after. Yeah. Yeah.
mean, especially, I believe, especially if you want to, to learn to program and you have never programmed before, try to look into functional programming. I, I will do <laughs> Okay, so thank you so much, Eric. It was really, really nice to know this. Uh, actually, it's really uh, inspiring, I found it. So I uh, hope to, to, to see you after and maybe know more about your projects and stuff. Thank you, Mike. Bye. Okay. Muchas gracias. Muy chévere. No, 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 no. Muy bien.